The function g is differentiable and satisfies the conditions above such that g of 20 is equal to 0 and the derivative of g is positive for all values of t. Let f be the function f of x is equal to this integral from 0 to x of g of t dt. Which of the following must be true? So if we quickly look at these statements, we can see that they're focusing mainly on this function f and what happens at an x value of 20. So to figure this out, let's go back up and see what kind of information we have. And if we make just a little bit more space, we can start with this function f of x here. And what we know from the fundamental theorem of calculus is that if we have some function h of x, which is defined as the integral from some value a to an upper limit of integration x of some function f of t dt, that if we have this situation, according to the fundamental theorem of calculus, if we take the derivative of this function h, so h prime of x, then this is equal to the function on the inside, but with this variable t replaced with this upper limit of integration. So the derivative of h is equal to f of x. And one way to think about this, on the right hand side here, if you take the derivative of this integral, you essentially get back the inner function. Or starting from this equation here, if you were to take the integral of each side, so the integral of the derivative gets you back this starting function. So this fundamental theorem of calculus essentially just tells us that derivatives and integrals are inverse operations of each other. And we can use this information with this function here, since if we want to look at the derivative of this function f of x, this is just going to be equal to this inside function here, but with the variable t replaced with x. So the derivative of f of x is equal to g of x. Now, in this function g, we're essentially just making a substitution. Anywhere we see t, we're replacing it with x. And for this first piece of information, that g of 20 equals 0, we can plug that in for our function g here. And we know this is equal to 0, but this would also be equal to the derivative of f at x equals 20, since the derivative of f and g of x are equal to each other. So essentially, the derivative of f evaluated at 20 gives us 0. And the derivative is just a measure of the slope of the tangent line at that particular point. So since the slope of the tangent line is 0, that tells us we have a horizontal tangent line. So we essentially have either a maximum or a minimum for this function f at x equals 20. And to determine whether it's maximum or minimum, we need to look at the second derivative of this function. So starting with this piece of information, if I make just a little bit more space, we can essentially take a derivative of each side of that equation. So we get the second derivative of f is equal to the first derivative of g. And from above, we knew that the first derivative of g is always positive. And just recalling that we replaced anywhere we saw t, we replaced it with x. But this derivative for all values of the variable is positive. So that tells us that the second derivative for this function f is always positive. And to understand what that means graphically, we need to look at the two separate scenarios. So we can either have concave up, or we can have a function that's concave down. And the second derivative is just a measure of the rate of change of the first derivative. So it's seeing how the slope of the tangent line is changing. So if we were to draw the tangent line at several different points along this concave up curve, we want to ask the question, what is happening over time to the slope of this tangent line? So as x increases, we can see that this slope is getting more and more positive. So this is the case where the second derivative is a positive value the rate of change of the slope is positive. And now in this case, where we have a concave down function, we can again look at the slope of the tangent line of various points along this curve, and again ask ourselves the question, how is it changing? And what you can see is that this slope 
starting at a positive value, then going to about zero, and then becoming negative, this slope is decreasing. So the rate of change of the slope, or the second derivative, is a negative value in this case. And since in our case, we're dealing with a second derivative that's positive, we know we're dealing with a concave up situation. And we know that at an x value of 20, we have a horizontal tangent line. So that would mean that at x equals 20, we're dealing with a minimum point. So letter A here, that f has a local minimum at x equals 20, would have to be the correct answer.